Hello everybody, I'm Jack Ivey once again live in the studios of WRMG TV 12 and also Television 97. We're going to welcome you back to our political forum and we're excited about having another very special guest today. He's running for fourth district supervisor in Tishomingo County. Folks, welcome Mr. Marty Thomas with us today. Marty, good to see you. Good morning, Mr. Jack. Uh, Glad to, to be you. here. Good to see you. Marty and I have got to know each other out on the campaign trail. We've been doing a lot of political rallies together. All the candidates get together in different towns and of course that'll be going on through the summer. But of course, the big election day that we're first concerned with is going to be coming up on August 6th, and that's where you're going to have to make a very important decision who you want to be your next 4th District Supervisor. Now, it will not be finalized then. We'll have to go to November to finalize it, but in, uh, of course, the uh, August primary, you'll have to either vote in the Democratic side or the Republican side, and they'll all get together by November, and then you can vote uh, either party. But in this particular one, you either got to vote in the Republican or the Democratic Party. And, uh, Marty, glad to have you here. And first of all, uh, tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself, just to kind of kick the program off. Today. Well, Mr. Jack, as you said, I'm Marty Thomas. I live in Tishomingo. Lived there for 43 years. I'm married to Angela Thomas, and uh, graduated high school there in 1984. I'm 54 year old. I have four children, four grandchildren, two grandsons that go to school here at Belmont. Sounds good, and of course, uh, we're excited about having Miss Angela with us here today. And oh yeah, she goes everywhere with me. She does, that's good. Uh, you need uh, need that moral support for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of folks uh, might want me to ask you, and of course, we're gonna ask you a lot of things today, uh, hopefully know more about Marty, so to give you a better idea that you definitely wanna put him in office to be your next fourth district supervisor, but I guess the next question would be, what made you decide to run? Why are you running? Mr. Jack, Tisha Mango's always been close and dear to my heart. I've been all over the world. I've been to Israel, uh, Turkey, Paris, D did a lot of traveling, but every time I come home on leave from the service, when I cross that county line, it was like you went into another world. Tisha Mango is the best kept little secret in the world. No doubt about it, and uh, nothing like Tisha Mango County. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of things have to go into account you know, on why people decide to run. And uh, was there anything that you'd like to see being done different in the fourth district? Would that be a reason maybe you decided to run? Well, Mr. Jack, since I've started this campaign, I have I have learned a lot. You know, I mean, you go into something new, you 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 learn a lot of things that you didn't know went on. The fourth district in Tishomingo has the most road mileage of all five districts, and uh, as of right now, it's getting the least amount on the budget. I would like to go in there and joint effort and the, talk to the other board of supervisors, the other four, and work with them and see if we can't get our budget equaled out so that we can take care of our road mileage. They say the reason we have the most road mileage is to make sure we have as many taxpayers as every other district. Well, if that's the case, our budget should be equal. What are some things that you'd like to see improved uh, as you've kind of traveled through? I don't know, you've been out going door to door a lot, so you've had a chance to see what's happening in the 4th District. So what are some of the things you'd like to see improved? Well, speaking of being out on the road, Mr. Jack, first of all, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of work, but I have got to see a lot of old classmates, a lot of old friends that, you know, when you get involved in life and raising children and grandchildren, you don't have time to go around and visit. And of course, social media gets a lot of attention now. But to see, uh, see a lot of my old classmates and friends. But when I started this campaign, I had in, m in mind, I told my wife, of course, we prayed about it, and uh, the Lord confirmed through prayer that this was the right decision to run. I'm, a I'm making three promises to the people in the 4th District. First of all, I am going to improve our road conditions. I'm not saying I will re-blacktop every road. If the money permits, the Lord knows I will. But I am going to improve our road conditions. Second of all, when's the last time you've seen the ditches cleaned out on our little back county roads? People want to know why our road conditions are so bad. The water can't run down the ditches. It's running across the roads and deteriorating our roads. Now, I do understand our roads have been in bad shape for years. But I am going to make a difference. Third of all, my three promises. Third, I will work hard. I was raised up poor. Not ashamed of it. I was proud of my mom and dad. They worked hard every day and worked hard for everything they ever had. Never had a lot, but they worked hard for what they did. That's all I've on, ever known, Mr. Jack, is work hard. Them three promises I know I can keep. And 
I want to work with our schools and our youth. I want to make sure our schools are taken care of. I have always been involved in the summer programs in baseball. I've coached a lot of, a lot of these people that I'm going around visiting now, asking them for their votes. I coached them when they was younger. I, I am very involved in our youth. Uh, as I said, I've got two grandsons going to school at Belmont. One is six and one is 15. One's playing high school ball and one's playing coach pitch during the summer. I, I, I want to help with them all I can. As you've been working out in the county, I guess going around uh, asking for the folks vote and meeting the folks, uh, if you had to maybe grade uh, the job that's being done in the 4th District right now, what kind of grade would you give it? Huh. Well, Mr. Jack, if you needed open heart surgery, I couldn't tell you I could do it and you'd live tomorrow because I have never done that. And folks, I've never been a supervisor. I understand there's laws and rules and stipulations that a supervisor can and cannot do. But the question was, what, would I, what do I think about the job that's been done? Honestly, and me and Jeff is friends, I hadn't seen a whole lot done. Our taxes have been raised. We've borrowed money. And uh, we keep blaming the prior supervisors that had been in office before. Now, I understand that you have five supervisors. You have to have the majority of the vote to get anything done. You've got to have three votes to get anything done. I understand that. But if we go borrow $250,000 and we pave blacktop seven miles, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure that road didn't need paving. But why, my question is to Jeff, why not take that $250,000 and spread it all over the district and, and do what you can all over the district? Now, my tax dollars is paying for that seven miles of blacktop. Them folks that live there, I'm sure they appreciate it, and I'm proud for them. But what about the rest of the district? I want to look out for the whole district. I have run my campaign on this. Everybody matters. Mr. Jack, I was told when I started campaigning, first thing you need to do is go find out who's registered to vote. I prayed about that. My thought was, everybody's important. If you're not registered, if you're a convicted felon and can't vote, I promise you, you've got family members that can. And if I feel like if I make you feel as important as anybody else and treat you with the respect that you deserve, your family members are going to hear about me. So that's why I've run my campaign. Another thing uh, I was going to ask, what do you think about the supervisors as a whole in the Forest County? We got, uh, of course, uh, supervisors cover the entire county. You got, uh, of course, I guess, uh, uh, Brandon Grissom in District 1, District 2, Nikki McCray. You got uh, Mr. Busby down in 3. Of course, Jeff in number 4 and uh, Greg Collier down in yes, number 5. Yes, that's correct. As a whole, I think they've done a super job. I learned Saturday listening to the, to the men speak up there at Midway. Uh, one of them said uh, after, after 12 years that he's been in office, they have brought in 14 industries. Hats off to them. That's a great job. Into the district or not district, but to the county. 14 different industries. I know uh, the silicone plant at Burnsville, big operation. I understand they, they pay real good and everything. And I'm sure that Jeff probably helped in that because they was originally not gonna come here because of the power situation. And uh, somehow the powers that be, they got to put in their own substation on the waterway over next to the waterway so they could have the power to come in here. So hats off to the supervisors. I think they've done good. The only problem I have is little old fourth district with the most road mileage. We've got Endersea on the south side of the county. We've got Endersea on the north side of the county. Mr. Jack, when they dug the Tom Bibby waterway, I was just a teenager in school. We was told that we was going to have industrial parks down there at Payton. They laid aside land for that industrial park. Well, somehow it's got put on the back burner and now they have changed it to a wildlife refuge. But if you go to right down here on the low, uh, North Road, just uh, west of Belmont, down on North Road, there's a chip mill right there, right next to the waterway. I can't understand why our supervisor has not dogged Jackson, talked to the Corps of Engineers, and begged and pleaded, let's put a chip mill down there. One of the number one leading industries in the county and in the 4th District is our logging people. 
We got timber companies got timber all over the county, especially in the 4th District. I'm sure our guys that own these logging crews would a lot rather drop, haul their timber four or five miles than 25 or 100. Right. Jack Ivey live here today from WRMG TV 12 and also Television 97. We're talking with Marty Thomas. He's a candidate for supervisor in the 4th District. And uh, I guess the next question, uh, maybe uh, what makes you think you would be a good supervisor for the folks in the 4th District? Mr. Jack, I've always had a passion for Tisha Mango, as I've already said. And uh, I, I always tell my folks at church that I go to Gospel Lighthouse at Brother Bertram's a lifetime member. I am pro-life. I am pro-gun. I support our Second Amendment. But I'm running on the Democratic ticket. But any decision that I make, just like when I decided to come out and run for y'all's supervisor, I pray about it. Now, I am a strong believer in prayer, and God will show you the path that you're supposed to go on if you'll listen. You have to keep your mouth shut and listen to God. God will lead you and direct you. I have 22 years of construction experience. I've done everything on the job from building roads into the job site, putting in forms, setting up concrete, putting the buildings up. We have built buildings all over Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. I have done jobs at the Tish County School, jobs at Belmont School, and jobs at Burnsville School. Band Hall, the indoor facility in the field house at Tish County, the field house at Belmont, and the cafeteria at Belmont, and the gym. So I have worked all over in the county. You take and put, I have learned one thing. You make sure that the customer's satisfied. You, the taxpayer, I work for you. If I go in office, it's going to be my passion to make sure that I take care of you because you pay me. I always tell my men on the job site, when you do something, if it's worth doing, do it right. Do it like it's yours. Be proud of it. At the end of the day, when you turn around and walk away from that job, look back at it and be proud of what you've done. That's a good, uh, good thing and uh, beautiful facilities you've been involved in as far as building here in, in the Tishomingo County area. Uh, about to wrap it up, of course, I know uh, Marty's excited about getting back out on the campaign trail. And, of course, you know, August 6th is going to be here before you know it. And that's when you're going to have to make that um, big decision here. I've got a couple more questions. One of them I'm going to let you ask for the vote. You've got some things you and I talked off camera that's uh, near and dear to your heart. You want to share a little bit of that with the folks out there? Uh, yes, Mr. Jack. Uh, four years ago, I lost my mom. And about six years ago, I lost my dad. And, of course, my sister, it's just me and my sister. And my sister, she lives a little ways from here. And me and my wife dealt with uh, taking care of them and, and making sure that they was took care of the best we could. The elderly, seems like in the last 12 to 13, 14 years, the elderly has got pushed aside. I know uh, to get anything done, it's like pulling hand's teeth. You, you just... You feel like you're beating your head against the wall. The elderly is very dear to my heart and the youth. The youth is the generations coming up. We need to be building now for them so they don't have the struggles we have now. My opinion, I think that I would like to take set up some kind of youth programs where I can take the youth out and maybe let them help me during the summer on the roads and let them see what manual labor is about. We have nobody, trust me. 22 years of construction experience. It's a dying trade. Our youth is not interested in it no more because they ain't put out into the heat and the work. Some, some youth will enjoy it. You've got to give them the opportunity. If they don't enjoy manual labor, we will deter them away from that and they will go to college and get a degree. Sounds good. Marty Thomas, our special guest today, and of course, uh, Marty, I know you've been busy out over the 4th District, and of course, you've been all over the county. You've been to uh, pretty much all the political speakings, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how many more speakings there's going to be between now and November, but if you get a chance to go out and hear the candidate speak, uh, do that in person. If not, you can always watch it, of course, on TV 12. We put it on YouTube. We put it on Facebook. Make sure you spend time uh, you know, with it being on YouTube, you can stop it and start it, and you can go back and watch it again. Go watch all these candidates speak and find out more of what they stand for. And Marty, I think an informed person that votes uh, is what you're looking for. You want them to 
uh, knew who all was running and listened to everybody. And I'm going to give you a chance to ask for the folks' vote out there today. Marty Thomas, who wants to be your next 4th District Supervisor. Marty? To all you folks in the 4th District, I've told you everything that, that I have to offer. When I was a child, my mom and dad didn't allow you to eat in the living room. I brought everything to the table. I've laid it out on the table. I'm not making you no promises that I can't keep. But, and I know there's a lot of you that I have, I have not been able to come and see. I work 10 to 12 hours a day. And uh, I, I have Fridays and Saturdays. I do not campaign on Sundays. But for you folks that I have not come and seen, I made three promises. I will improve road conditions. I will clean out our ditches so the water ain't running across our roads. And I will work hard. I am running on the Democratic ticket, but I am pro-life and pro-gun. I would appreciate if you'd come out August the 6th and give me your support and vote because everyone matters. Thank you. Sounds good. Marty Thomas. Marty Thank Paul. you, Mr. Jack. I appreciate you uh, coming down. And, of course, uh, uh, Marty, of course, is going to need your vote coming up on August 6th. And if you're fortunate enough to win there, he's going to need your help again in November. But uh, we need to do whatever we can to get as many people out to vote. These folks work really hard for you. And, uh, folks, I think you owe it to yourself to go out and vote. Whether you vote for Marty or you vote for anybody else, I know Marty's main concern, like most other candidates, is that you exercise that right and get out and vote. We appreciate Denise on the controls, Miss Angela here, our special guest today in the studios. And make sure that if you get a chance to see this video on Channel 97, or if you watch it on YouTube, Facebook, make sure you share this uh, interview and get the word about Marty Thomas. He wants to be your next fourth district supervisor in Tishomingo County. I'm Jack Ivey saying thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next time right here on your hometown station. Y'all have a great day.